Good evening, it's Brian here at Fitzpatrick's Garage, Dublin Road, Clear. I want to show you the brand new Honda CRV Hybrid. Brian is my name. If there's any information you want on this particular car, please do give me a call 086 843 1945. Or if you come to the garage in Kildare Town, just ask for Brian. We are a family run business in operation for almost 70 years. Um, so if there's anything you want to know about trading in your car or finance or anything like that, give me a shout, WhatsApp, text, whatever suits 086 843 1945. Just while we start, I want to give you a quick idea because this one here is petrol, this one here is hybrid. So just very, very loosely, what are the kind of uh, differences or similarities between them? Uh, and then we'll concentrate on the hybrid after that. So at the front of the car, distinguishing features, how you know a hybrid version. So lifestyle is the middle kind of spec in the car. Down here we have LED fog lamps, whereas on the petrol equivalent, they are a halogen fog lamp. So from the front, the nose, all that kind of stuff is the exact same to view, but just LED down here, halogen over here. That's how you know the difference at the front. Moving down the side of the car, the only single way I know that this car is hybrid is because it's got a badge over here, whereas this one doesn't. Moving down the side, no difference whatsoever there. And then once we get to the back of the car, both of them have boot spoilers and all that stuff. However, on this one, in a petrol, we have two exhaust coming out the back. Uh, so over here and over here for the petrol, whereas on the hybrid we have one exhaust down through the back here. So the other thing as well which distinguishes as a hybrid is this hybrid badge. But as you can see, because sometimes people kind of worry are they going to get less or spec or whatever when they get into the, uh, the hybrid, as you'll see there's actually no difference whatsoever actually you, you kind of gain some stuff of anything so very loosely as we were saying the rear of the car the only way you know the difference between the hybrid is one exhaust versus two exhausts badge over here down the side of this car we've got a badge over there and then down the front of the car we have led in terms of the front fog lights whereas these ones are halogen on the petrol the other thing as well that comes on these hybrids is keyless entry which means I can just put my hand in and I can lock the car using this little swipe pad here and I also get a push button start whereas on the petrol version over here I have normal key set up with a lock and then I've got my normal key start. In terms of the interior these cars are identical and going forward everything I'm going to talk to you about here is pretty much identical so these are all features just on the lifestyle model but um, the other thing I'm going to do is just give a quick drive on the CRV as well just so you'll see how it operates one other very very cool feature on the hybrids is the gearbox in through here which I'll detail better in a sec so uh, let's get going so like we were saying this is the hybrid model this is what is called polished metal in terms of the colour on the outside looks really really smart so features that are standard on the outside of the car we can see in through here we have LED headlamps for the dipped headlamps and also the full headlamps big long parking light all the way down through here and then you can see the chrome grille starts to kick in and it's even part of the headlamp so very very stylish all the way through as we talked about already we also have matching LED front fog lights um, moving around to the side of the car they are a nice diamond cut as you can see 18 inch polished alloy wheel so they're really really smart and along the bottom here this silver trim section matches the nice silver trim section around the windows also moving around to the back of the car again we get more silver garnish down long through here and actually there's one other thing that someone had asked me and I'm going to do it the boot size in terms of the hybrid versus the petrol so CRV for as long as it's been out one of its key attributes has always been a really big boot so this is the hybrid boot that we're looking at and this is the petrol boot that we're looking at in here okay petrol does have one little advantage it's got to have something it's got a spare wheel whereas on our hybrid we don't have the option for spare wheel because the battery sits in just in around this area here. Uh, but other than that, if you look at that at a glance, again, apologies about the sunlight, but in terms of the boot sizes in those cars, they're almost indistinguishable. So I wouldn't be worried about anyone if they're wondering that, um, is there going to be a compromise uh, in terms of the size of the boot? It's not going to be enough to stop you making a decision on buying the hybrid car. So back to the hybrid and I just moved the car out of the sunlight because it's so bloody bright where it was. So um, as we were saying, nice chrome along the front, LED for the headlights and indicators as well have a nice LED functionality. So again, just gives that car 
the real nice upmarket look to it overall. Moving around to the back, the LED theme keeps going on the rear lights as well as those indicators all the way up through there. And then if I could stand on the brake pedal, you'd see an LED brake pedal, or sorry, brake light going on through there. The thing about this car is it's all about how it drives. It's really, really nice and quiet and economical. So, again, like the petrol counterpart in the lifestyle, I can send you videos on this kind of stuff, but we have veneer, tweeter, nice piano black, storage in through there, rear seating, three head restraints, three three-point safety belts, armrest in the center, eyes a fix over through here, eyes a fix over through here, so, and you can, not ideally, but you can get three child seats across the back, but I think there is better cars out there, but it is doable, but it depends on your child seat size. That is how I would sit in the seat normally, so just to give you an idea, if I'm six foot, there's some, like that's really good headroom there, Again, apologies about the light, I'm going to swap sides over here. So this is the size over through here, and then after that, as you can see, this is how much space I got in front of me. I also have ventilation in through here, I also have two USB points in through here, and then I'm going to move over to this side, which is where I was sitting. This is actually genuinely how much space I'd have in front. Kangaroo pockets in through there as well. All these doors have side impact protection beams. As a standard all the way down the side of the car. Behind this wheel at the front we'll have anti-lock brakes which stop the wheels from locking up when you have full braking pressure. Emergency brake distribution which uh, basically means if you go into grass verge it transfers braking pressure to the wheels that have the most amount of grip. Um, and things like emergency brake assist when you put your foot down flat um, it keeps the maximum braking pressure available until you completely lift your foot off in the event of an accident. Steel bars again down that side for side impact protection. So a really, really nice looking car. Let's have a look in the front. Front and rear electrics finished on this kind of diamond, sorry not diamond, this uh, piano black finish. Veneer down through the centre. Some people actually have opted for silver inserts which we can change out instead of the uh, veneer there as well. We just hear the engine kicking in there at the moment, so the car is in a start-stop mode, but I can go through that with you better in a sec. Lumber support for lower back in through here. These seats have nice peripheral support either side, as you can see in through there. Height adjuster in through here. That steering wheel is rake reach, so it goes in and out as well as up and down. Over here we have our parking sensors front and rear. Lane change warning. So this one here warns if you drift out of lane. You have another function in through here which we'll show you in a sec which actually it literally keeps you within lane. So this warns you, this actively keeps you in lane. Push button start which we saw already. Cruise control. So a couple of functions in here in through here which are important. So first thing is I hit this main button here. We can see these lights coming on. Adaptive cruise control and lane keep assist. Uh, I can send you a video on how they work, just give me a shout, oh, it thicks 843-1945 and I'll send you a video how all those safety systems work. But the uh, first one is radar cruise, so it means I'm driving behind someone, this car will follow that person depending on how far you tell it to stay behind them. The second thing is the two lines either side, it'll basically line up in through the centre and try and keep the car in between the lanes. Uh, in the most uh, safe way possible and then after that I've got a speed limiter which is also going to limit my speed but I can also tell it to uh, respect the road signs and it'll limit my speed in that way as well but, uh, which is quite useful also. Over here on the steering wheel then I have Bluetooth, uh, voice activation and the voice activation is to do with smartphone connection in there for things like Siri or Android Auto. Um, in through here we're going to have various information about fuel usage and especially in this car because the hybrid, how economical we've driven, information about speed signs, information about navigation, uh, after that then how long the car has been running, rest brakes if we're getting, it actually monitors, again back to safety, it monitors when you're driving along and your steering inputs aren't really as, as I suppose the car doesn't feel like the steering inputs you're putting in. Uh, and overall inputs are correct, it starts to sense that maybe you're not completely in tune with what you're doing, so it's suggesting then that you're obviously tired. Uh, the bar up here, we'll see in a sec, is to do with power and stuff like that when we put our foot down. Um, wipers are completely automated, lights are completely automated, and what's nice about them is they dip when you meet traffic and they go to full again then when you are in an unlit area. Down through there we got a little light, and we also have, it's kind of hard to see, 
the USB connectors, uh, which of which there are two down through here, power outlet as well, drinks holders in through here, another 12 volt outlet in through here. What's nice here is there's no gear stick, so it's a nice open area. Uh, climate control in through here, I'm actually roasting at the moment, so I'm going to turn down the heating. Uh, so I've got this hard button here to turn on and off the climate setting. And then I can slow that down and speed it up, and I can use then front and rear, uh, front and rear windscreen demisters, which also demist the wing mirrors as well. Uh, air recirculation inside and out. Home screen in through here will bring us back to things like home. Okay, back into home again. So this Honda Connect setup uh, is going to give me Garmin navigation in through here. Audio information in through there, it's all touch and swipe, phone information here, trip information here, settings, smartphone connection, that's things like your Android Auto and your Apple CarPlay and stuff like that as well. Up through the centre we have a uh, electrochromatic rear view mirror which darkens itself. We also have another mirror here which is keeping an eye on who's going on and what is going on more point in, through, in terms of the back. Back to safety we have an SOS kind of setup so if you have an accident they can dispatch somebody out to you if it's a serious impact that's detected. So this is all, that's a new thing for Honda. Uh, very very useful. Um, okay what's on the screen in front of me over here is fuel over here is the state of the battery. So at the moment, the car is currently ready. So just to show you what happens to start the car, uh, and okay, some people are worried about plug-in and all this stuff. Three types of... By the way, thank you for staying watching the video if you've managed to get this far. Three types of cars that you can get. Uh, one of them is a fully electric. This is not fully electric. Uh, the second one is a plug-in hybrid. This is not a plug-in hybrid. This is hybrid. So that means basically we have a two liter petrol engine and we have a battery which is in the boot of the car. Um, that car makes about 184 horsepower. So the first thing is we get into our car, I hit this button here, and I've now started the car. So as you can see in through here, I've got my power band. This is telling me how much fuel I've got left, because this, you could drive this car and never know that it's a hybrid or anything like that. You don't need to know. Uh, the car does everything itself, so you don't need to do anything that's any different. You don't have to charge it, you don't have to do anything. In through here is the battery level, uh, so that there will diminish over time as the battery uh, gets used up and then it'll recharge itself. Um, okay, electric vehicle mode, which means we're ready to go. To show you how the, uh, gears work, we can drive, neutral, reverse, by the way reverse gives you a camera and it also gives you this area here which is kind of telling you what's going on around you and it also gives you different settings on the camera as to what way you want it um, and then front parking sensors are also standard as well. But back into this, drive, neutral, reverse, park, simple, handbrake on, handbrake off and then over here are the different modes we can have a fully electric mode. So I can press that, I'm gonna put on my safety belt here for a sec, click into place. So that means then if I go for drive, I can go for a full electric mode, or I can go for an econ kind of setup, or I can go for a sport mode where it turns red and they've got a sport sign down through here. So let's have a look at how everything works. So say for example, low speed kind of stuff, say I want to just drive down as far as the uh, Honda sign over there. Like in a petrol car, I'd be off the clutch, I'd be onto the gas and we're using some gas. In this case, I'm going to come out of sport for a sec and I'm just going to leave the car in EV mode. So I don't, but here's the thing actually, right? Without confusing anything, I don't have to do this. I just have done it in this case. So let's actually turn it off and let the car make its own decision. So we're going into an econ mode where the car makes a decision itself. So my foot is going to come off the brake and we're just in a fully electric mode. Car's bringing it across, we're not using any engine whatsoever. So we're just cruising. In terms of city traffic, this is where that car is going to excel because you've managed to move along and you haven't used any fuel whatsoever. Now, if I want, and I know I'm going to be doing some creeping, maybe up to about 50 kilometers an hour, I can hit that EV mode in through there, EV comes on, and then the car is going to do its best to stay in a full electric mode. So just to give you an idea, we're starting off, we're doing about 12 kilometers an hour. As you can see in here, it's just the battery. There's the engine, there's the battery. The battery is getting us up to speed. So again, we haven't used anything, we're just using battery at the moment. So this is all fully electric. I don't have to decide, the car is going to decide itself. So 33, now the engine's kicked in. You see along here, it's given it a bit of a hand. We still have the battery helping us along, but the two things together, the word hybrid, that's why it comes in, that's what's actually powering the car now. So as you can see, there's only a certain amount that the battery's going to be able to do before it runs out. Um, in this case, what it's doing is we see there's a petrol engine along through here, and there's also a battery which is giving us an assist at the moment. So say, for example, if I speed up, say if I slow down though, 
see the way now the end or the um, wheels are turning and they're providing kinetic energy and recharging the battery so that battery is going to start moving back up so the thing about it is remember you don't have to do anything yourself I'm just showing you this stuff you don't need to notice the car is going to do everything itself the car is basically going to try and do the most economical stuff it can it can use the battery as much as it can it's going to use the petrol engine when it needs some help but it's going to alternate between the two continually let's just have a look at how the car accelerates uh, so sometimes people used to be worried about the older hybrids you know you put your foot down they're quite noisy I've got to do two accelerations one of them is you know pretty straightforward and then I'm going to floor it so let's have a look at uh, how the engine responds in terms of power and just noise as well so this is normal straightforward, let's just get up to speed. Nice and quiet. The engine is actually kicking in as well, but it's not making too much noise. Feels more like an electric car actually. It feels like a, kind of feels more like a fully electric car actually. And you'll see how much power I'm getting from the bar up through here. So that's sufficient to get me up to 80 kilometers an hour and I can cruise along through there then. If I want to get up to 100 pretty quick, I'm not going to fully floor it, but I can give it some more power. See, it's not noisy. And then I let my foot off, and the car is starting to recharge the battery again. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to pull over, and then I'm going to floor it, and you can see what the acceleration is like on the car. So what we're going to do is we're going to stop, and from zero, we're going to go floor it. <laughs> it's quick. 200 that's so fast the car has also got little paddles here on the steering wheel as well so basically this one here and this one here but they're not like gears so normally in some cars this is for going up through the gears this one is for sorry this one's going up the uh, gears two three four five six this one is for going down the gears in this case what it does actually is uh, as you saw what will happen is I'm trying to get out of the sun here by the way as you saw there a while ago the car basically um, when I let off the pedal the wheels are turning and they're actually producing power and it's getting uh, converted back up and to recharge the battery. What I can do is I can use these gears to create more uh, friction and the extra amount of friction then is basically getting pulled back up uh, and charging the battery even quicker. But what it does mean is when I let off the pedal you can feel more of a restriction so the car is less likely to freewheel as far. But that's all and it's just it's engagement. What you're doing is basically you're trying to manage the battery um, if you want. By the way you don't have to do this. You, as I said to you already, you can drive this car as if it is any sort of car. You don't need to do these things. But there are things you can do basically to become more efficient in how you drive. Every car, if you drive a petrol car, if you drive a diesel car, if you drive a hybrid or electric, if you engage more with the car, you will get way better results in terms of your fuel efficiency. And these are just options that you have. But as I said to you, you can get in, push the button, start it up, drive it on as normal. And just in more realistic kind of conditions, say we're doing 50 kilometers an hour, for some reason, we want to get up to 100 kilometers an hour pretty quick, so we floor the car. And once again, just to give you a better idea, say if I want to get up to speed, but I don't want to floor the car completely. I just want to do it in a more comfortable fashion. And this might be a bit boring for some people, but I know some people will like to know how does the car operate in terms of kind of urban areas. So I just have the camera sitting on the clock at the moment. So as you see, we'll say we are now going down a hill. So we're not using any fuel, which you wouldn't be in a conventional car. Uh, you can see the battery is attempting to, sorry, the car is now recharging the battery. Again, I'm not doing anything here. The car is doing everything itself. I'm putting my foot down and now I've got power coming from the battery. I'm not using any petrol engine whatsoever. And this is where the petrol engines, uh, even in our petrol CRV, this is where they are using fuel, and this is where the efficiency um, issues can come in with some cars. So at the moment, you know, how far have we traveled? And we still actually have not used the petrol engine yet. Uh, all that's doing there is the battery is uh, bringing us along. I let off the pedal and now it's getting recharged. I put my foot on the pedal again and it's bringing us along. Uh, we have not used petrol engines since I started recording here, so this is completely free what I'm doing But again, you don't have to worry about charging or anything like that These are the areas where basically when you're driving in your car. This is the stuff that uses fuel Low speed start stop all that kind of stuff. I'm going up a hill here now So I would say yeah, so the petrol engine now is giving us a little bit of an assist because it knows we need a little bit more power to get up the hill um, But again, I take my foot off the pedal back onto the pedal again battery engine 
What I'm trying to say to you here is it's doing everything itself, but it's doing it in the most efficient way it possibly can. Um, so if it can use battery, it'll use battery. If it needs a little bit of help, it'll use some engine, but not all engine. And this is where the car is really, really going to, uh, I suppose, become much easier on your fuel bill compared to a normal conventional car. But as you see for that journey, fair play to you if you stayed watching, because I know it's really, really boring to watch, but you can see just how much of that little journey there has been petrol engine. Very little compared to a conventional car. So there you have it. That is uh, not the quickest video, and I know definitely not the most interesting video, but hopefully for some people that really have some questions about, uh, we'll say, the operation of the car and all that kind of stuff, uh, some of that might be helpful for them. The car is a really nice looking car. It's a really well equipped car. This one, as we see, is what's called a lifestyle model uh, in a two wheel drive, but there is also a four wheel drive version of the car available as well. We can take any trade in that you have. We can organize finance on a car like this. We are a family run business in operation for almost 70 years. If you want any information, do not hesitate to give me a shout Brian is my name 086 843 1945 this is the hybrid lifestyle model if you want more details on the hybrid sorry on the hybrid uh, or another video on hybrid please give me a shout and I'll be happy to help if you want more information on the lifestyle as a specification I can send you another video on that as well uh, thank you for taking time to watch and hopefully this car is of interest to you